Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilots YouTube channel. And today we're going to talk about your Grumman brake service. Now we're going to start at the bottom, that's down in the calipers, and we're going to work our way all the way up till we get to the parking brakes. So stay tuned while we talk about this system, explain it all, and have a bit of fun. We would like to ask you please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. So let's talk a bit about the brake system components that we have. First, we have a brake disc. Then we have a caliper. Then we have the external brake hose. We go through a bulkhead fitting through the fuselage into an external hose. Then we have the master slave cylinders for using the system. And finally, a parking brake on the very top. So now here's a picture at the very bottom, and that is the brake caliper. We'll have a picture of the disc in a minute. But now let's talk about all the parts that are numbered here on this diagram. Well, first we have the caliper casting itself, and it comes in a couple of different varieties. Then we have a piston. Part number three is the O-ring. Part number four is the pressure plate. Part number five are the brake pads, and we use the Rapco RA66-105s on our airplanes. Then you have a rivet. Then you have the backing plate. Then you have the anchor bolt, and that's what everything slides on. You want to keep those good and clean. Then you have the MS nut, the washer. Then you have the seat bleeder. Then you have the screw, the bleeder. And then you have the cap. Then you have standard AN45 fitting flare to uh, MPT threads. Then you have the AN4-17A bolt, and that pretty much wraps up the system for you. And finally, you get to the torque plate. We have a couple of varieties. We're going to be looking at the ones we don't use right here. So parts number 17 and 18 do not appear on our airplanes. So make sure you're using the correct diagram. So here on the bottom, we see a caliper hanging on the external brake line. We also can see the brake disc. It's kind of shiny because the brakes do rub on it, but it's not as pretty as a new one. And then here we have the torque plate assembly that we use on our aircraft. And those two holes I was pointing out are where the anchor pins, and that's where the anchor pins slide through. So you want to keep all that good and clean so it slides real well and you don't have any wear on the brake linings. So to facilitate all of this, we take a ream, 3 8 inch, and we run it through the torque plate holes. And that gets them good and shiny. And then we can move on to cleaning the anchor pins. And then we're going to take a quarter inch ream and we're going to go through the AN4-17 holes. And you see all the uh, corrosion that comes out off the aluminum when we do that. And that's just keeping the bolt holes clean so the bolts that go into it hold it all together. They shine nice and easy and there's no debris in there to hold moisture and cause other problems. And then finally, we're going to turn our attention to the dirty anchor pins. We're going to get them as shiny as we can. So again, that everything slides easily. That means everything floats real well. So you get even wear on both of your brake pads and you get both sides of the brake disc being grabbed for additional braking on our aircraft. Those pads look small. I know our aircraft can weigh up to 2,400 pounds, but these are adequate for stopping our aircraft at least one time before they heat up and they're very adequate for multiple stops. And then finally let me touch on the brake disc. You can get a new Cleveland or you can get a Rapco. You can get them in stainless steel, you can get them in standard, but we do have replacement parts. So you can always replace those when they get too pitted or corroded and there is a minimum thickness for that caliper disc. You also do want to check your pressure plates and your floating plates. In this case, you can see that one of the bolt holes is wallowed out, and we don't have a brake lining on here. But again, you want to check to make sure that all the components are proper and that they're not worn either. And occasionally you will see a metal worn part, not just the brake pad. Now when you get to the external brake line, you have a couple of different options. You can go with the original style, which are the rigid aluminum lines. And it's a convoluted shape that they come in, but once you have them, you want to be careful because as you flex them, they will work harden and they will eventually break. That's why the flexible ones are preferred. And then finally on the lower end, we have the brake pads or brake linings, and those are the Rapco RA66-105s. 
We have four on our airplane, again, in organic or a metallic, and you just want to make sure that when you install them, you get them seated really well, and then you break them in properly. And then after the internal hoses, we get to the slave, master, and slave cylinders for controlling our brakes. They're available in two varieties, those made by Gerties and those made by Cleveland, and they can be overhauled with a couple of O-rings. So that's the next part of the system, and here they are. We tape them all up so we know where all the nuts and all in the alignment stays so we can put it back together in the same orientation in the aircraft. And then if you don't have the chains on your brake shafts, which tend to make the shafts and the master cylinders bend a little bit, you do have the parking brake assembly on the 78, 79 and later models. And they again have a couple of O-rings. Some people prefer them. I always had the chains, it's kind of what I prefer, but don't forget your parking brake that sits on top of your system. Now we're ready to pump up the whole brake system. Now pumping up your brake system or bleeding the brake system because you're bleeding the air out of the system. So we start our pressure bleed at the bottom on the little bleeder valve on the bottom of the caliper and then we pump up the fluid and that will drive all the air out of the caliper, out of the brake lines, out of the cylinders and then right out the top, that's when you stop, when you've got air coming out, finally clear fluid. At that point, you can shut everything down, and now you have pumped up your entire system, and you can clean the floor where you were pumping up at. Now, you can also do a couple of things. When you're driving all the air out of the system, now you're not going to have any spongy brakes. You're going to want to be careful you don't hit them too hard in bald spot or tire. Don't ask me how I know that. But you're also going to be exchanging all the fluid out of the system. We like to change out that hydraulic system. It does trap moisture, and we do change it out. So when we get a customer's airplane and we bleed the brakes, we recycle the used fluid that comes out. And you can have some problems. You can crack a flare line in the rigid line, but that's a rare occasion if you're careful with them. So, ladies and gentlemen, I know this was a long and complicated look at your brake system. It is an important part of our aircraft, and we hope you found it all useful and informative. I'd like to thank you for watching, and have a great day flying your Grumman. Well, here's Freckles, our 19-year-old cat supervisor. Hopscotch and Sweet Pea shredding a box of soap. Tarzan hunting on the back porch trying to catch a bird on the other side of the screen. Here he goes making his leap to get up there. Quite the angelic one. They are quite the activity. And little one here, we're out and start call her Squeaker because that's what she does. She squeaks instead of meows. And of course, they're the in and out kitties because either they want in or they want out.